today I'm going to get into writing some helper functions that are going to help with the rest of the BLD core script. Uh, well, the way I'm going to approach this is by doing some of those big copy pastes that I started talking about last time. And so I'm going to explain a little bit about how I want to mentally approach doing these copy pastes. So first of all, I want to sort of approach it like one function at a time rather than grabbing all of the helpers and just copy pasting them over. So I kind of want to think to myself, okay, I need a helper that does this th particular task, go find that in the destination, wherever it is, put it into, or find, go find it in the source code, move it into the destination code, and then I'm gonna read through it once before I run it to see if there's anything in there that looks obviously wrong. I'm gonna test it in place, make sure it does the stuff I expect the way I expect it to work. And then I'm also gonna read it again afterwards more carefully to see if there are any stylistic things or small details that are wrong. Obviously, if an error pops out when I'm testing, if something doesn't work the way I expect, I'll try to figure out what's wrong with it in the moment too. But I think the key here is that I'm not gonna just grab a giant block of code and sort of get lost in the sauce. I'm gonna know what I'm grabbing before I grab it, and then I'm gonna audit it in context before I move on. So that's the plan. As I'm going, I'm going to try to explain what each of these helpers is for, and besides that, we'll just see how things go. Let's get into it. The first helper is a function called flags from options, or for short, flags from opts, and it's the heart of how this whole thing is going to work. Its job is to filter out flags from a flags file, and it lets us manage the flags for lots of different build configurations. The way this works is that there's a single text file full of flags with each line being dedicated to a single flag. And then there are filters on those lines that determine when that flag should be applied. So what I do is when I run the filter function, the flags from options function, I pass it a list of options. And I also tell it which file to look at. And then it uses those options to see which of the file flags in the file actually apply. And the rule is that a line passes or the flag on a line gets include in the, included in the return if all of its filters are included among the options that were passed. So you can see here whenever I pass a set of options, the flags that come back are the flags that are sort of possible to reach by going through the filters that are enabled by those options. There are certain flags in each of these cases where those flags are excluded and the reason they're excluded is because there's some filter on the, that flag that wasn't in the options. So that's the main idea. Now time for a few bash scripts. First, in a bash script or, or a function inside of a bash script, there's no way to do named parameters. Parameters get passed to you through this weird sort of specialized variable thing. It's like an unnamed array that just contains the parameters to the script or to the function. So one thing I like to do is to have a block early on in the code like this that parses those arguments and establishes names for the parameters so that you can refer to them in a sort of clean way. And you know, it's sort of like having a signature. Now, when I want to know how to call this function, I can read the block that parses the arguments and that tells me what kind of ways I can call the function. Next, there's this strange syntax, which it, honestly, I couldn't even begin to tell you what it does. But the main point here is just that this is how I can read a text file and it automatically splits it up into lines, which is helpful because th this particular sys setup, what I'm trying to do is parse each line and do work with it. So having a thing that parses a text file into lines and puts it into a bash array for me, that's pretty useful. 
Finally, there's this block of code here I wanted to emphasize just to point out how what this is doing is this is the meat of the parsing work. It's pulling apart the line into filters and then seeing which filters can be met and if all of them can be met finally, including the flag. And none of the code looks particularly small. I haven't compactified it. What I've tried to do, in fact, is just use the most plain concepts that I can. I'm using for loops. I'm using breaking out of for loops. I'm using, you know, just super basic concepts and letting them kind of expand out and be a little bit large rather than looking for maybe some trick tips and tricks. There might be like a hash table or other ways that I could make this look a little more like I've refined it algorithmically. But in this case, going for something super plain and using the most basic constructs of the bash script language is going to make it way easier to keep this around. Since it's not a language that's like dominant in the code base, I don't want to use its most fancy features. I want to stick to really plain code. And I think that's an important part of how this script is styled. All right, let's move on to the next helper now. This helper is a function called options from source, and its job is it, it lets us mark source files with certain options by creating these sort of special comments that have like a begin and end marker, and we can put some options inside there, and that way we can attach options to a source file. All right, this one is a bit simpler. So all I give to the function is a file, and I then split it up into tokens that are delimited by white space using this syntax. Once I have that, I'm just scanning, looking for a pair of tokens that look like this and this. And note, I'm not talking about C++ or C tokens here. I'm talking about white space delimited strings inside this file. The, the bash script doesn't respect the fact that this is a comment in the language. It's just a bunch of white space limited text. And so when it finds this opener marker and this closer marker, then what it does is it takes all the tokens in between, creates a list out of them and returns that list. And that becomes our options from source file function. All right, on to the next helper. This is a real quick helper called ddupe. It just takes in a list of strings and then returns a version of that list with all of the duplicates removed. It's mostly just something I include to make the options list look nicer when I start putting option lists together from multiple sources where I might get the same option twice. There's not much else that I can think of to say about this one, so on to the next one already. This is another quick helper called has option. It takes in a single option followed by a list of options and then it returns a one if there's a if the single option shows up somewhere in the list and otherwise it returns a zero. And the reason I'm including this one is it just turns out to be handy once in a while from the BLD core script to be able to check a list of options when we're doing certain advanced features that we'll get to later on. All right, with that one out of the way, on to the last one. The last thing I want to include here is an OS context cracker, and then I'm going to combine that with the local parameters thing we've already set up to create this thing called implicit options. And with that, we're starting to get to the building blocks of something I can use to put together this system that I want. So the building blocks we have are we have these options things coming from all sorts of different sources, the implicit options, options from sources, and we're also going to get options on the command line later. We're going to send those options through the flags file and the filtering function to turn the options into a bunch of flags. And then some of these special options like the compiler and linker options are used specifically to control how we build the command line calls that we actually make to invoke the compiler and the linker and to create our executables and similar type output files. So we kind of have all the building blocks we're going to need, and I think we're all set up for next time to start putting together actual build commands. So check that out then.